Remember the dark days of March 2020? 100,000 restaurants closed overnight. Six million restaurant jobs disappeared. How did eating establishments and cooking schools survive during COVID? They pivoted. And then the Singapore seafood noodles. Seattle's leading restaurateur, Tom Douglas, experienced an upheaval he could never have predicted. When COVID happened, of course, we didn't know anything what was going to go on. None of us did. We had let 860 of our 869 people go. So we had nine people, which we called the pilot light team. It was very traumatic. They stationed themselves at Douglas's warehouse in Ballard and took action. The building had access to the outside through the loading dock, an easy curbside pickup. Yes, thank you. So they built a kitchen and started ramping up takeout service. We were doing about 450 a day, and then at that same time, we signed up with World Central Kitchen out of D.C. and started producing 600 meals a day for them to distribute throughout the, the area because everything closed. People forget. Douglas estimates the to-go business generated more than 50% of his income during this time and is still up 10 to 20% today. And we'll see what happens as we rebuild our company. Another crucial pivot for Douglas took place at his cooking school, Hot Stove Society. Located in Belltown, the popular school had already been offering in-person classes for over eight years. When COVID hit, we went virtual within two weeks, had all of our cameras and everything ready to go. Don't mess with your raviolis too much. When they float, that doesn't mean that they're done. For the first year, they also shipped out pre-portioned meal kits to clients to go along with the lesson. We did that for anywhere from, you know, a small group of six to 600. We love to use shallots instead of onions because it has kind of that flavor in between of garlic and onion. Going virtual did present some challenges, as instructor Annie Elmore discovered. You have many different people on Zoom, right? And they all have different skills, and they all have different kitchens, and they all have different equipment. Let me know if you're like halfway there or almost done, or give a thumbs up. Ready to go. But it all worked okay. out, and classes right, filled up quickly. I adjusted my recipes to a little bit simpler and focused more on technique. I'm just going to take the tops and I'm going to rough chop. And one of the things at Hot Stove is we love to teach people techniques so that when they leave here, they take something permanent with them. And I'm going to take my endive and I'm going to cut it lengthwise in half. Virtual classes. I would say they were probably mentally more important than anything for me, for the team, for the process of getting back on our feet. Who doesn't like deep fry food? Come on. Smaller cooking schools also had to make critical adjustments to stay afloat during this time. The pantry, located in Ballard, opened in 2011 as a cooking school with an emphasis on community gathering. When classes went dark, they quickly converted their class recipes into beautiful takeaway meals. There were definitely some ups and downs figuring out what worked out well and what didn't, and we were, you know, trying to also be able to give back to the community. We were cooking for like over 100 people every day, so it was, it was a big change. They also pivoted from in-person cooking classes to virtual ones, a move that allowed them to stay engaged with their community. We're going to slap it and stretch it slowly at the same time. And All these changes made it possible for places like the pantry to finally open their doors to students again. We're making three different pasta shapes, uh, and each gets its own filling and its own sauce. We want this to smooth out. We want it to get springy. Over at Hot Stove Society, classes are also back in full swing. I want it a little bit thicker than that. So I'm just not going to press this hard. So there's a little bit thicker. Growth is happening and restaurants are opening up again. We've been able to reacquire some of our amazing people that we lost uh, when, with the shutdown. Uh, that is super cool. No doubt the food industry will continue to adapt and will keep some of the changes they've made. But one thing's for sure, 
there's no substitute for gathering in person. Being around other people and being able to have that, that community and conversation and, you know, and doing an activity together has been really exciting and, you know, it brings people a lot of joy. <laughs> Watch City Stream Thursday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel. Or get video on demand and podcasts anytime at seattlechannel.org.